Hello and welcome to this month's Road CC Recommend Show. I'm Rebecca Charlton and alongside me this time on a stall is Liam Cahill. I have to say, Becca, it is nice to be up high again. Uh, hopefully you've got the idea of this now. Instead of doing a yearly awards for the best cycling products, we're going to tell you what the best products are each month. It keeps things fresher that way and it means that every month Becca and I get to uh, sit here and tell you all about it. Well, today we'll be running through all of the best products from April. We've got some comforting buying advice about saddles and there's a product of the month award to give out too as well as all of that there's a recommended route and a recommended cafe stop as well but enough of the intros let's dive into some great products shall we? absolutely becca i thought we were done with winter but it's absolutely not gone away has it um yeah it's really cold again thankfully although i hate it there is kind of a glove for every conceivable type of weather mm -hmm. these days. And Bontrager's Circuit Windshell, they'll kick us off this month. Um, they're a great option for these unseasonably cool spring days. In fact, Becca, I'd say that this kind of glove is actually my favorite type of glove. They're very soft. They keep your hands nice and warm just by blocking the air. And they're low bulk too, so you mm -hmm. don't get a ton of padding around the hands, so you get a nice natural feel of the uh, bar. They pack up into a pocket easily as well. I, I don't know about you, they're just like, they seem so versatile for our kind of weather. They are good, and as I always mention to you, I get very cold hands on the yeah, ride, so I always like a backup, even this late in the year. And actually, I've been scrolling the weather app, and it just doesn't look like it's going to get warm anytime no. soon. When's the heat wave coming? They'll be, they'll be getting a fair <laughs> bit more use as well. Yeah. Decent price as well, these. No, you've said that. It's going to definitely improve. Oh. Uh, yes, so they come in at £39.99, so not awfully expensive either. Um, moving on now, Straight Cut's Top Tube Bag massively impressed us this month. There's loads of space in there with a volume of about 1.1 litres. It's easy to use and features a sturdy design that's also waterproof. Um, have you thought about a Top Tube Bag? Yeah, I know you like a snack. I, I love a mid-ride snack, and to be honest, uh, with, with so many pairs of gloves in my pocket, there's <laughs> not the much gloves. room for snacks so <laughs> these these bags i think i might get a bar bag really but this this is a kind of frame bag isn't it i guess they're great for other things like emergency rain jackets and stuff like that as well um i always you... end up with so much in my pockets though so maybe yeah. i should think about have it have you actually got your kit right once <laughs> no. this last week no, no and right. actually i'm normally pretty good as i say always got my eye on that weather out but um yeah i've been too hot too cold all yeah. over the place so those frame bags <laughs> probably worth uh, worth buying if you've got the space on your bike. The next product that we've got um, is the Prime Primavera Carbon Aero Bar. Uh, this is the second iteration of the bar and I've been lucky enough to review both models. It is a brilliant bar, especially when you consider that £150 uh, price tag. Honestly, no other brand is getting close to that price. They really aren't. Um, What's new for this model is apparently a little more stiffness and a slightly lighter weight. Not that I had any issues with the old model. The shape has been slightly revised and I love the hand position in the drops for sprinting. You get a great hold of the bar essentially. Um, the only thing that I would change is there's a little um, end bit to the bar. I'd make that slightly longer just for a, um, a nicer drop kind mm. of general rolling around position. Internal routing though, that's really easy. The underside has massive holes. Um, and yeah, Becca, that was the bar. I understand that you've got a base layer. I do, Liam, I do. Um, yes, well, one for summer is the Hydratech Pro Fresca base layer. This got tested in that tiny window of warm weather that we had a few weeks ago that I've clearly already forgotten about. <laughs> That feels like, <laughs> honestly, that feels like years ago. It does. Um, but the base layer did very well. Uh, the lightweight fabric is exceptionally breathable and comfortable against the skin as well. And there is a slightly heavier fabric on the tops of the shoulders that should help with durability mm. as well, actually. And I don't know about you, Liam, but I always wear a base layer, all weathers. Yeah, unless it's really hot for me. If it's like above like 28 degrees, I, I won't. But the, the Really? Yeah. I always do. But then... I only started wearing a base layer for racing, just for in case of crash, because when I was yo much, much younger, much, much <laughs> You're younger still young. than I am, uh, I, I was a fan of a little crash. Um, but yeah, it would protect against road rash. Mm -hmm. But funnily now, for general riding, where in races I'll still wear gloves to protect against those mm -hmm. crashes, 
I won't wear the gloves for general riding, but I'll still wear the base layer. But I just yeah, find it a here, bit actually. more comfortable as well. Mm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. But I think once you just get into something. But yeah, I do, I do like a base layer. That base layer, yeah. it is a little bit on the small side. Well, funny you mention that. You'd be yeah. fine if you're a climber, but it is worth checking the size guide, as you say, uh, because with this one we did find it came up a little on the small side. But overall, a really good quality base there. From base layers back to top tube bags. If you've got one that swings around, and to be honest, I don't, but we can't get through this without laughing at Dr. John Bagworks de widget. Um, stop laughing. Uh, this is essentially a 10 millimeter headset spacer with a lug for threading straps through. It's designed to hold the top tube bag. It's nicely 3D printed and it works perfectly. The de widget also allows uh, your bars to rotate as normal while boosting stability for your luggage. I'm sorry that I've got the giggles today, oh, Liam. I know, it's but awful. well said, de widget. Thank you. Back on Planet Sensible, if you've already got a 10 millimeter spacer above your stem, then the de widget is super simple to install. You simply need to replace the existing spacer with this. You can use it with any top tube bag that you would usually secure around the headset or stem, though you might need a small loop of Velcro um, as most front straps are vertical and not horizontally attached. And I think it looks super neat as well, actually. At £15, it might seem a little expensive, but it is really well made. Uh, time for some buying advice now, Liam. Uh, this one comes off the back of one of our products of the month, Specialised S-Works Roman Evo Saddle. So what advice have we got about buying a saddle, Liam? Well, this one is super tricky, as everyone is mm. different. So let's pass this one. Let's pie this one over off on Dave, um, who he does have a lot of experience of buying saddles. Um, so Dave, over to you. Okay, let's talk about saddles. Now, saddles are a tricky subject because it's a very personal choice and what works for you on an all day ride, that might have your riding buddies in tears a few miles down the road. Now, that being said, there are plenty of things you can look at when you're buying a saddle to help you make the right choice. The shape of a saddle is the main thing that's going to affect whether it's comfortable for you. This is the S-Works Roman Evo saddle and you can see it's quite contoured at the back here where you'll find other saddles are more flat and like a lot of saddles it's available in different widths. Now there are two in this case. What you want for maximum comfort is for your sit bones to rest on the centre of the padded area here. Um, you might be able to find that out through trial and error. but if you want a more scientific approach, then you can get your sit bones measured either as a, a part of a saddle fitting or as part of a full bike fit. The Roman has a central cutter here, as you can see. Now, this is to relieve pressure on the nerves and prevent any numbness. So if that's a problem for you, that's certainly something to try. Now, the size and the shape of this cutout differs from saddle to saddle. Sometimes it's a hole like this one and sometimes it's just an indentation in the padding. Now, this Roman saddle is designed for racing and the more aggressive your position on the bike, the more you're likely to put pressure on the nerves down there. So I use a cutout saddle on my racing bike, but on my more upright gravel bike, I don't find that I need one. The amount and the type of the padding is another thing to consider. So it's not simply the case that more or softer padding is better. Um, if it's not stable enough, then you'll move around on the saddle too much, which can cause chafing and that will end up hurting. So if the saddle is the right shape for you in the first place, you might need minimal padding to make it all day comfortable. The design of the base can have a marked effect on the feel of the saddle as well. So this is a light and expensive saddle, and this is a full carbon base here. So that's very stiff. A carbon reinforced nylon base or just a standard nylon base will be more flexible. Now, that isn't necessarily a bad thing. And again, it might differ for you depending on the bike. So my race bike has a full carbon saddle, a little bit like this one. It's stiffer and it's lighter, and it's fine for the shorter, faster rides that I do on that bike. My gravel bike has a cheaper nylon based saddle with steel rails. It's a bit more comfortable for those longer rides and the extra weight isn't really an issue. So those are the main things to consider when you're looking for a new saddle. If you're not comfortable, then there's a number of possible reasons why. It could be a bike setup issue, it could be the width of the saddle, the shape, or the firmness. Now getting this sorted is crucial to enjoying even a short bike ride. And our best piece of advice 
is just to get yourself down to a good bike shop where you can get face-to-face -face help. Lots of bike shops will have schemes where you can try, you can borrow or rent a saddle to try before you buy, and it's definitely worth trying a few different styles to see what works for you. Thanks Dave. Well, I'd second that tip about the bike fit and heading to a shop because it can be an absolute minefield and shops generally work with a brand to supply a test saddle or money back scheme that allows you to find the right saddle for you. So it's definitely the one place where bike shop is king. Yeah, absolutely. When I worked in a bike shop, um, we had a few people that would come in, try one saddle that they'd seen and thought they'd love and then they'd kind of bring it back and uh, yeah, we'd sort them out with something a little bit different. And, Usually, after at least say, three visits, you go away happy, at least, yeah. or more comfortable. It's if so not true. Happy. Yeah, and so many people ask me what I ride and what might suit them, yeah, and, it, so and I always feel it? bad, but I have to say it's so individual. Yeah. It might yeah. not work yeah. necessarily because it works for me. Um, now that you've got the perfect saddle, it's time to ride it to a lovely cafe. This month's recommended cafe is Valo Life, which it has to be said has had an up and down few years, it ended on an up happily, and saw it voted as 2019's Cafe of the Year. Over to Lee to tell us more. Hi, uh, my name is Lee and I run Velo Life Cycling Cafe in Berkshire. We're based just outside of Henley on Thames um, on the foothills of the Chilterns. Some amazing riding in the area, which is awesome. Um, we set up the cafe a few years ago with the intention of just putting together something that could supply cyclists with exactly what they need. So we do incredible coffee, um, amazing cakes and toasted sandwiches, um, and we've got a fully functioning workshop in the back as well. We've tried our best to keep everything as local as we can. So we use a farm for milk, um, which is about five miles away from here in the Chilterns. Um, my brother, based just outside of Basingstoke, he um, makes all of the cakes for us and the incredible sourdough that our toasties are on. Um, the toasties are a little bit famous around the area. So yeah, they're absolutely incredible. Um, we've got a cool little challenge loop, which is just about just a 10.7 mile loop that runs from here. Come and grab yourself a free coffee, have a go, put yourself on the leaderboard. Um, there's some pretty quick people on there. Um, yeah, you know, everything we do is just to cater for cyclists. Loads of seating outside, loads of place to buy to rack your bikes, um, incredible coffee and just a good atmosphere. We often show the cycling on when it's around. Um, yeah, it's just a great vibe. So um, pop through, hope to see you soon. Catch you later. Thanks, Lee. If you've got a favourite stop, tell us what they are. There's a link popping up now to the Road CC Forum where you can suggest your own favourites. The link's in the description, of course, below as well. Now, if we actually go and pick your choice and it's featured on the show, we'll chuck your favourite cafe some cash to put behind the till for your next time. Uh, your next cake stop will be on us. Sounds good to me. Any excuse for cake, of yeah, course. Um, well, back to this month's recommended products. And next we have the Tailfin Cargo Cage. Got something that you need to attach to your bike that won't go in the bottle cage as well. Tailfin's Cargo Cage is the answer to your problems. The small cargo cage has three M5 slots, which are spaced for bottle cage mounts. Now on a normal two bolt bottle cage inside the frame's triangle, that gives you two positions space allowing. The load chip converts the cage into an L shape with the foot heavier items like like big Nalgene or clean canteen bottles are better supported and easier to mount. Without it, you can mount longer items like tent poles, for example. One for you and your adventurous spirit. Yeah, we'd plan a camping trip. Why not? Um, <laughs> that go. looks like a properly tidy design. And I've also got a product that is very sleek. The Aldu Carbon uh, is the first full carbon road option Rota has produced, and the arms form part of a modular system, meaning that parts are purchased separately and combined to suit different bikes and riding styles. The cranks, axles, uh, the chain rings, and the spider, if required, well, they're all available separately. You can build them into a one by or a two by setup and even add the Rota in spider power meter if you're you know, wanting power uh, data. Uh, they're pretty light too. Um, Becca, I'm going to turn to you now because as the stylish one between us, would this be something <laughs> that you'd have on your bike? Thanks for that, Liam. That was right. unexpected. It's not I much of a contest, you say that. If I'm <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, they are really nice, actually. And talking about style, it's all about tan wall tyres at the moment, isn't it? Oh, you cannot beat a tan wall tyre. Well, these might be the tyres for you then, Liam. Um, aside from the sidewall colour, Goodyear's Connector Ultimate Gravel Tyre now comes in this big 50mm width for both 650B and 700C wheels. And they offer versatile grip, a large volume and a floaty ride. I have to say, um, the tread on these looks like they do quite well on the road. Yeah, actually. Um, the close spacing and low profile of the central section means that they roll really nicely. And then if you bank the bike over, the shoulder digs in nicely. Now, away from tyres and onto some snazzy sunnies. Um, the Alba Optics Delta BLK Vzm Lava Glasses. Um, I'll go and get them actually, Becca. Hang on. All right, here we go. That was seamless, I, Liam. I know. It didn't take me <laughs> half an hour to find them at all. Well modelled. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very mm. much. Um, I'm not sure about them fitting me personally, uh, but these do feature, as you can probably see, quite a unique frame design. Um, and that actually delivers on holding them securely mm. on your face. Uh, even just sitting here, I can see that the lens has impressive clarity. And even though the price is just below that of some premium designers, you are getting premium specs here. Now, Liam, if I could just get you to turn your head to the side for a moment and uh, model those for us, you'll see that the arms are quite short, which means they're unlikely to interfere with the retention system of your helmet. So, a lovely pair of sunnies uh, for just under 130 quid, actually. Um, I'll take these off. Inside. <laughs> inside sunglasses i'm not a rock star anyway on to our final product before we reveal our product of the month um gravel wheels have become so so wide over the last few years yeah. and the scribe gravel wide plus plus uh, they have a 25 millimeter internal rim width the clue is kind of in the name with these ones isn't it Yep, and the reason is that the wider rim supports wider tyres, like the Goodyear tyres that we mentioned earlier, actually. Uh, these wheels are ideal for tyres above 35mm, and installation was pretty easy for us, actually. Tapes included, as are valves, and while these aluminium wheels aren't the lightest, they're a great deal, I think, at 330 quid. Yes, and uh, if you like a loud free hub, these are for you. Actually, Becca, before we move on, uh, that's a nice little can of worms to open up for the uh, comment section. Loud or quiet free hub? We love a can of worms here, don't we? Um, oh, yes. I, I have been giving this some thought and I want to stay on the fence as usual. I'm not I'm not convinced either way. I'll I'll kick people off. Um, silent free hubs in no, absolute dead silence for me. I mm. just want to cruise down a nice descent um, in peace. I don't want a, a kind of a swarm of bees behind me. Well, with that can of worms well and truly opened for the comments section, tell us what you think. We should get to the big one now, product of the month. A big round of applause uh, for the Scott Addict E-Ride Premium. And this is a bike Ooh. that you've ridden, Liam. It is actually, um, and I even got to use it for a hill climb face-off with British National Hill Climb champion, Andrew Feather. Um, <laughs> He was monumentally fast. It's ridiculous. I really enjoyed watching that. I Watch it. didn't. I'm glad it wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't enjoy the hill climb effort. <laughs> you know, he he simply starts at 700 watts and just continues. It is absolutely it's absolutely. It's crazy. Mm. Now the um, the e ride it did actually allow me to beat Andrew on his uh, normal hill climb bike, um, but I did need every watt of the 250 watt uh, <laughs> motor. Yeah, it, it really. It was quite close still, um, but that bike is is really, yeah. really nice. Like, um, lovely carbon frame. It rides just as like a normal bike. It, you know, when we were just mucking about on it um, before yeah. filming, it was just lovely. Um, yeah, and then you get kicked up those really steep climbs if you, if you want to. And um, I don't think it turns you into a proper like Superman. Like, it, I wouldn't be riding around on the normal hills and kind of breaking comms, but it will it will shove you up a very very steep hill it's great <laughs> that's definitely what i need it's all you want really <laughs> it is what you want uh, well the final thing today is to talk about our route of the month yeah absolutely uh this is where we tell you about a brilliant cycling route that you might want to go out and ride and even if you're in the local area you might have missed so over to the south downs to uh, check in with anna who has this month's route I'm doing one of my local hilly loops in West Sussex today. That's about 60 kilometers. It starts and ends in Linfield Coffee Works. 
and heads out towards Royal Tunbridge Wales Way. There's over a thousand metres of climbing, so it's a really good one for packing in some decent efforts. It's a pretty front-loaded ride as well, so you're done with all the major climbs by about 40k in, and then you get to enjoy the nice descent through Ashdown Forest. The way out towards East Grinstead is pretty draggy, with a few steeper ramps to wake up the legs. The first major climb doesn't come until 12 kilometres in, so there's plenty of time to warm up the legs before putting any proper digs in. This climb is along Legs Heath Lane and it starts by the Weirwood Reservoir. It goes up 110 metres over 2.5 kilometres, starting off pretty gently and it gradually ramps up to around 10%. The next climb is Kids Hill at 22 kilometres. It's number 19 in the official 100 climbs and is nicknamed the Wall. It's one of those climbs that does start off quite steep but really ramps up. There's one point where you think you must be almost done but then there's a slight bend and you can see the road really ramps up straight ahead of you. This second climb goes up around 130 metres but over a shorter distance of just 1.5 kilometres. The average gradient is over 8%, but there's definitely some steeper sections in there, up to around 17. At around 35k in, you reach the third decent climb, which is Black Hill. It goes past Crowborough and there's a good one in Sussex for doing longer efforts along, as it's 3.5km. It's just 4.5%, but it's got quite an even gradient throughout, so I find it's an easier one to pace up. I finished with all the major climbs, so now it's time for lots of fun descending through Ashdown Forest and to enjoy all the lovely views. Oh, and there's some rolling hills on the way back too. You definitely can't escape those around here. That's my route through West Sussex. Hope to see some of you out on the road. Back to Becca and Liam in the studio now. Thanks, Anna. Well, if you want to check out that route, you'll find it along with all of our other brilliant routes over on our Commute page. There's a link, of course, in the description. Oh, and send us your favourites. Um, all you need to do is plan a route on Commute and invite us to it or tag us in a ride that you've already done. There's a link popping up now that will take you to the page on Road CC that explains how to do it in more detail. Uh, the link's in the description below too. And if we pick your route, uh, you'll get a year of Commute Premium on us. Yeah, really good. Well, we hope you've enjoyed taking a look at the products that have made our recommended list this month. If you want to check out the new Road CC Recommend site, then there's a link popping up now and it's also in the description below as always. Uh, from those pages you can get through to the full reviews if you really want to read in depth. We'll be back next month with a new batch of products. If you've found this video useful then give it a like, um, subscribe to see more from us and hit the bell notification icon to get notified when we post a new video. Thanks Liam, thanks for watching, see you next time.